Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming today. We are very happy to see everyone here. Today, we'd like to talk about a journey to developing an in-house payment system, cloud-native development with Spring and Pivotal platform. I'm Junya Suzuki. I'm from Tokyo, Japan. I'm an application engineer focusing on Java and web systems. I've been developing new services with the Spring framework and improving system operations for the last, of, last few years. I'm Daichi Kimura. I'm Daichi Kimura, and I'm a platform engineer. I'm responsible for operational support, promotion and management of cloud EAS, pass, and monitoring platform for payment services. These are the types of services SB Payment Service provides. We have a wide range of services from payment agency services to credit cards but for this presentation, we will focus on payment aggregation service. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them at the end of our presentation. Today, I'd like to talk about the path to the introduction of the Pivotal platform and how it has had an impact on development and operations. In the three years since I changed jobs. Now let me tell you the story of how we moved from outsourced development to an in-house payment system. In 2016, when I joined the company, we relied on external vendors for all development. Zero internal engineers writing code. No development environment set up. Since that was the situation, we started by improving operational efficiency on our own. Looking at the reality of operations, there were many manual tasks and many errors due to manual operation. We automated the operations that created in us support tooling. We also introduced tools needed for development such as GitHub, Slack, Confluence, and Jira. At the same time, Three engineers joined, joined, and we accelerated Kaizen tasks as a team. The following year, since there was a problem that the payment service status could not e be easily understood and shared, a monitoring dashboard was created using Elastic Stack. This made it possible to visually determine the service status. The same year, we began supporting development projects with a focus on non-operational purposes. In the field, the old architecture continued to be used, and hence development release was expensive. And system monitoring was difficult. By replacing the old architecture with a spring-based architecture, it was possible to perform modern development and operations. At this time, Jenkins, Nexus, and Sonacube were introduced to help the development process run smoothly through CI. At this time, another engineer joined us. 
and we became a team of five people. So what we did in 2016 to 2017 was create an engineering team, create some in-house tools, and develop pay project supporting operational improvements. In 2018, we started working on the in-house payment system. The system to be deployed was an online payment service that provides various payment methods for e-commerce sites. The system provides a payment API for shopping site called Merchant. The number of merchants introduced is about 110,000, handling about 3 trillion yen in payments that's about $28 billion. The system supports more than 40 payment methods, including credit card, prepaid card, and account integration. In this way, this system is an intermediary service located between the merchant and the financial institution systems. The main requirements for the payment system were speedy development release, continuous improvement cycle, and easy to monitoring and fault tolerant resilient. Until now, all projects were outsourced to, be, to a development vendor. It was a very long journey from estimation, contract, and to requirement definition to acceptance. Relying on development vendors made it impossible to deliver incrementally and quickly in the agile way. I wanted to achieve speedy delivery and continuous improvement through in-house development. When the in-house development project started running, Kimura finally joined. And we became a team of six people. Filter platform application service, which is PASS, was introduced at the start of this project. From here, I'd like to talk about the platform. First, why we chose the Pivotal platform? There were two major requirements for the platform. <coughs> Firstly, improvements in the release process. Secondly, we wanted to achieve full utilization of the cloud. We searched for a platform to meet these two requirements. As for the platform, Kubernetes is very popular, and I'm personally interested as an engineer. However, the learning cost and maintenance costs are high, and it takes substantial effort to build out a platform more than our small team would be able to deliver in a timely manner. We didn't want that to become the bottleneck. Therefore, we decided to select a pass, which is a proven platform. This makes it possible for developers to focus on application development and deploy application quickly. The final choice was the Pivotal application service, the pass of the Pivotal platform. The reasons for the selection were great integration with Java Spring application plenty support for pro platform introduction operation, and CF push experience to deploy apps. The CF push command 
is a favorite feature for application developers. Developers do not need to write a Docker file because the container image is created from the source code by the build pack mechanism. CF push and build pack reduces extra works from developers. Another reason for choosing the Pivotal platform is the division of responsibility for the team structure becomes very clear. Just two platform operators support the Pivotal application service built on top of a standard EAS. And the application developer develops the application using Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. This allows platform operators to focus on building and operating platforms. And application developers can focus on designing and implementing business logic. There is almost no vendor lacking because there are only 12 factor app aspects to consider for deploying application on path. That's why we chose the Pivotal platform. Next, I would like to talk about the development operation form. First of all, I will explain the platform and over the overall architecture. In the upper middle area, of this diagram is the application service. The upper left is the development middleware. And in the lower area are the tool and middleware for monitoring platforms and applications. The upper right area shows the service broker for managing connections between applications, MQ, and database. This details will be explained later. I will now explain about the architecture. This is the structure of the application. A purchase request is sent from an online shopping site called a merchant on the left. It then flows to the financial institution system via the new system on the right. All applications are deployed on PAS as microservices. All apps are implemented using Spring Boot. The service named API Gateway routes to a service application that implements business logic for each financial institution. Since merchants and financial institutions are not part of our system, they are naturally out of our control. For this reason, Historix, a circuit breaker, has been introduced for inter-system communication. In a failure occurs a financial institution A without a, without a circuit breaker, a response delay or a timeout may occur. If such a situation persists, the failure is not only confined to financial institution A, it can propagate to service A, which suffer blocking processes and threat exhaustion. Furthermore, if such a situation continues, the failure will propagate to the API gateway, and as with service A, processing blocks and threat exhaustion will occur, leading to service termination. As a result, financial institutions B and C can be affected 
by the bad behavior of financial institution A, if a circuit breaker is used, even if a failure occurs in a specific financial institution. The failure is isolated and will not propagate. So there is no worry about affecting other financial institutions. In the way, circuit breaker realize applications with excellent fault tolerance. The following is an example of asynchronous notification processing from a financial institution to a merchant. Contrary to the previous flow, the payment status is notified from the financial institution the merchant. RabbitMQ is used to add temporal decoupling asynchrony. Both producer and consumer are implemented using Spring Cloud Stream. The payment status update notification is sent from the receiver application to the merchant through RabbitMQ and notification gateway. When a failure occurs at a specific merchant, it is possible to save it in a queue called dead letter queue and resend it later. If a merchant fails, the circuit breaker will prevent other merchants from being affected. Next, I will tell you the scale of the application that is currently running from the management screen of PAS. It was released in the summer of this year and is working without any problems. The total number of applications is 13. We are currently develop some applications, so, so the number of applications will be increased in the near future. Total number of instances is 47. Currently, we have more instances than usual because we have a particular merchant which has a huge amount of transactions in a limit, limited time. We plan to scale in the instance after the special event of this merchant. Until now, the server was manually set up and scaled in and out, but since PAS is used, the number of instances can be easily changed from the ma management screen. Let's move on to the next topic, CI-CD pipelines. This slide illustrates a rough flow of our CI-CD in development. The CI tool retrieves the source code from GitHub Enterprise, then builds with Maven, run unit tests with JNIT5, analyzes source code with SonarCube, and uploads JAR to Nexus, and uploads JAR to, uh, then finally deployed to PAS. After the application is deployed to PAS, the CI tool will automatically run e 2 tests and load tests with JMeter. Previously, we had been using Jenkins as a CI server. From this project, we are now using Concourse by Pivotal. This is the top screen of Concourse. Each frame represents a job pipeline. And the green and red square inside it 
represent the tasks that make up the pipeline. A square animated with diagonal lines represents the task being executed. This is the actual pipeline we are using. A push to the GitHub branch triggers the job. In that job, Maven runs unit test with JUnit 5, and SonarCube performs static code analysis. Moreover, the unit test is executed in various versions of Java, so that the effect of the update can be detected in advance. Applications that, the, that pass unit test will be deployed to the Nexus repository and become ready for release. The next job is deployed to the development and environment PAS. And it can be checked immediately. The staging environment is similar. The development cycle by CI is realized by repeating this pipeline. Next, I will explain the flow from the staging to the production release. Deploy to the Nexus release repository by merging into the master branch at release time. After that, after approval of, of the business team, platform team, and app team, it is possible to perform zero downtime release to the production environment simply by clicking this job when releasing. In the job, we are running a script that does blue-green deploy. I introduced the automatic test by CI, but next time I will introduce the test by Jmeter many times during the development period. The request was sent from Jmeter to API Gateway and the payment institution was replaced with a mock to check the performance. Sending the request was cumbersome and because it required processing, such as payload encryption, purchase ID numbering, and response passing. For this reason, JMeter, which has a high degree of freedom, can be set from the GUI and can output HTML reports has been adapted. We conduct some tests using JMeter. Here are two examples. First is load test. We continue to send about 20 times the expected amount of requests. For about five minutes, and confirmed that the expected throughput was obtained. We confirmed two things, performance exceeding the requirement and system performance limitations. This test found several application bottlenecks. The problem is that the throughput of HTTP transmission processing and SQL execution processing is low, RabbitMQ queuing stops, and circuit breaker cause an unexpected short circuit. I was able to grasp quickly that both problems were caused by using default library and middleware settings. Next is SOC test. We continue to send about half peak request for about one week. We checked 
if there was any performance that degradation due to resource leaks on the server running for a long time. We checked if there, were, there was any performance degradation due to resource, uh, sorry. As a result, even so, it was operating for a long time. Performance degradation did not occur, but we also found that monitoring and alert settings were not sufficient. In addition, although we needed to prepare a dedicated environment for this test, we are able to prepare the environment and instance immediately. Because we are using PAS, I will explain the Kibana and Grafana dashboards created during this test later. Also, during the development period, load test and ET test by JMeta for automatically executed every day. And the screenshot of the result was notified by Slack. The report HTML generated by JMeter can be pushed to PAS, and the result can be checked at any time. It doesn't make sense to conduct performance tests, such as load test and SOC test, only once at the end of the development period. It is important to continue to improve it by repeatedly executing it during the development period. In addition to the application, I was able to pay attention to the platform, middleware, logs, monitoring, and alerts, which greatly improve the overall system. Next, we will introduce how the platform configuration and operation have changed in terms of observability. The word observability has been heard in various places recently. This time, we are thinking about metrics, logging, and tracing from the viewpoint of making distributed system observable. In our environment, metrics collection and visualization are implemented with Prometheus, Micrometer, and Grafana. Lagging is implemented with the Elastic Stack, <coughs> and tracing is imp implemented with Zipkin. First, I will talk about metrics. Prometheus and Grafana are used for monitoring tools to visualize metrics and threshold alerts. Prometheus is managed by Bosch. We are using the community's Bosch release, alerts and dashboards suitable for Bosch Cloud Foundry is preset. The first advantage of the Bosch environment is VM scale out. For example, if you scale out an instance of Revit MQ, as shown in the figure, Prometheus regularly monitors Bosch information, so it automatically detects a new instance and automatically sets it as the monitoring target with the setting shown on the right. It will be added. In this way, setting up per instance is not necessary, so the tasks are reduced and there is no worry of missing monitoring. Similarly for apps, using the metrics aggregation app called Promulgator, when developers push a new app, the collection starts automatically. Since developers do not need to set up individually for Prometheus, this also reduces tasks and prevents omissions. 
Currently, we are considering migration to metrics registrar. That is a cloud foundry component for simplifying the configuration. App metrics are collected by using micrometer. The introduction of micrometer is very easy. In case of Prometheus, app metrics can be collected just by settings like this. Here are some of the dashboards we are using. First, from the platform perspective, the status of VMs operating with Bosch is shown. This is not a preset. We created it, but I made it so that I could understand the situation at a glance. By simply displaying information in this way, you can intuitively know whether it is normal or not. That being said, the time series graph is also displayed on the same screen so that the past changes can be also grasped. In addition, various metrics such as RevitMQ and CF router can be referenced. Next, the app perspective dashboard. Pushed up metrics are automatically collected and can be referenced in this way. We have now made it possible to immediately check information in Grafana, such as CPU usage and GC metrics that had been visualized from logs. For example, this is a GC duration metrics. It is very useful to be able to check this information in real time without any combating work. Next, I'd like to talk about alerts. As we explained, there are lots of dashboards in Grafana, but we can't always check them. Therefore, basically the action is triggered by alerts. We handle alerts in-house and do not outsource to external monitoring centers. However, the payment system operates 24-7-365. So alerts are classified into disabilities and those that need urgent response will be called by Twilio. This makes it possible to notice and respond in a timely manner even during nights and holidays. This is an example of an alert response. For example, if RevitMQ's dead letter queue that requires immediate action is detected, Twilio will call me. The alert is also sent to Slack. We can check the status in Grafana from the link written in the notification. In addition, by adding other than communities for presets, we are trying to detect the decrease of service level before the user's report. Next is logging. Platform and app logs are aggregated and visualized using the Elastic Stack. ElastAlert and Prico are used for log alerting. Dashboards like this are created from the collected logs and are used for operation. From here, I will introduce the structure. Elastic Stack is also built by Bosch. We are using the community's Bosch release to form a cluster. On the left side is log transmission from application and platforms. Logs are stored into Elasticsearch by syslog TLS by a load balancer and log stash. On the right side is each member of these dev ops. We use Kibana to search logs and receive alerts from Elastalert and Prico. 
application logs are collected by an application called Firehose to syslog. As a result, there is no need to consider the log destination in the apps. And the platform automatically collects and stores the logs by simply outputting to standard out. Currently, we are considering the migration of Firehost to syslog to syslog drain for helping with scaling and splitting of output data. Next is platform log. For the platform log, the destination is set for each instance by the Bosch runtime config mechanism. Since individual settings are not required, operational load is reduced. Introducing Kibana dashboards for log browsing. We create dashboards for each purpose of these dev ops so that we can check the each operation's status. Service status for bids, apps and system status for dev, and platform status for ops. From here, I will introduce a dashboard that I was looking at on the recent event ticket settlement. First, from the perspective of bids, you can look at the number of payments and transaction volume. Next, from Dev's perspective, we can see the number of application requests, latency, etc. You will notice abnormalities at first glance. We were able to immediately detect that requests were not received due to a merchant system error and that the request latency was increased in a specific financial institution. And ops, but from the ops perspective, visualization from the log is not the main thing. It is organized for making it easier to investigate errors. It is classified by HTTP status code from router logs for making it easy to investigate. As for logs, anomaly detection is triggered by alerts. And as before, Twilio's call enables us to respond 24 hours a day. At the time of the settlement as before, service started without any problems and operated stably. However, after that, an error occurred. Twilio then made a call and the whole team rushed to investigate the impact and cause. The result of the investigation was that communication had been interrupted for a moment due to an infrastructure layer failure. It wasn't a big problem because it recovered quickly. As explained, this made it possible for us to operate the system stably in a timely manner. Finally, tracing. As for tracing with Zipkin, it is possible to visualize the communication between microservices. The actual screen looks like this, and you can see at a glance which process took time across multiple services. By using Spring Cloud Sleuth, the application sends a trace with just this one setting. Zipkin is also built using the community's bash release. The trace is stored in Zipkin by setting to output trace in the application. To store the trace, Elasticsearch for logging is shared. The stored trace is then searched by Beads, Dev, and Ops members. Trace stored in Elasticsearch is used not only for reference in Zipkin UI, 
but also for trend analysis using Kibana. The data source is the same as the, that of Zipkin UI, but by summarizing its, each purpose, we visualize the number of transactions and average and percentile of the processing time. The processing time can be calculated from the application log, but the trace output by Spring Cloud Sleuth already contains that item. So it, it is easy to visualize. As an additional effort, we are also integrating traces for existing, existing apps outside of Pivotal application service. This also makes it possible to visualize the sequence of communication with existing services in this way. There are situations that we notice problem with existing apps. This is an example of operations during troubleshooting. We try to make it possible to investigate seamlessly by attaching a Kibana link to the Slack alert and making the Kibana's trace ID item link to Zipkin. We can smoothly trace with Zipkin. This makes it easy for these members who are not familiar with the internal structure and log relationships to check the status. With the Zipkin screen, you don't have to use the whiteboard for answering the question where and what is happening. Now, let me tell you about two case studies. Firstly, the effort for our biz members to check the system status. Secondly, the case of detection of the abnormal trend on a specific time slot. The biz member is a specialist of credit card system. As explained, since he is not a developer, he is not familiar with the internal architecture. This Kibana dashboard is a visualized from trace information as explained. The upper area is the number of processed transactions per each app. The lower left is the average processing time. And the lower right is the percentile of 100s, 99s, 95s, 90s, and 80s. When the biz member was checking how to use Kibana, he detects that some transactions have taken too much time than expected and jumped to Zipkin via the link in Kibana. He figured out that some process took time so much. And he asked the developer about the issue with the link of Kibana and Zipkin. By this detection, the developer figured out the bug on the specific situation. Like this, this member is now able to detect the problem easily, and we can share it smoothly. I introduce one more case about the merit of visualized traces. This dashboard is the same as before, but it's filtered by a specific app. By storing the trace, the processing time can be referenced over a long period of a week or a month. In addition, it is now possible to filter by each condition, such as application. And statistical analysis by percentile is available. This allows us to notice that it was abnormally delayed for a specific time slot. It had occurred every 2200s. The overall average on the left is normal, but the red line, which is at the 100th percentile, there were delayed requests. When zoomed, 
the number of processing was decreased in all cases. It was less than 10 seconds, but our service affected. Using the log dashboard and Zipkin dashboard together, it seems that the transaction was locked. From the investigation, we found that there was a delay in database transaction on, of the existing system. Existing system have been in operation for a long time and were monitored using the traditional method, but this issue was not detected. Since we were able to grasp the time slot and duration in detail, it was easy to plan improvement. Also, it became an opportunity for the overall system to consider setting timeouts and reviewing the number of parallel processes. This time, by introducing such a monitoring mechanism, we were able to start improvements from these slight anomaly detections. We could build an environment in which metrics, logs, and tracing are provided as a dial tone, and we realized that the development and operational efficiency has greatly improved. So to summarize, first, we established an internal development team and worked improvement, improve operations. Then we introduced the Pivotal platform and extended it with a range of technologies from the ecosystem like Grafana, Prometheus, and Elastic Stack to improve observability. On this platform, we are then able to build a complete in-house payment system in just six months using agile development continuous delivery. So what did we get from the platform? The first was release improvement. Release time has been greatly reduced and zero runtime release is now possible. The release is one click, so no human error occurs. The second was full use of cloud. Scale out and auto scaling is now possible. The platform dynamically arrange containers, making it less susceptible to failure. In addition, we gained self-healing from the platform, which can automatically restart container and, and the apps in the event of a failure. And what we gained from the in-house payment system was that we are able to get the system we wanted. The system now has a reputation for fault tolerance is it, is it easy to monitor and can be released continuously? In the past, we are struggling with outsourcing to vendors. At the time of outsourcing, we could not go fast, did not have sufficient biz dev ops visibility, manual error often happened, and it was expensive. This started affect our competitiveness in the market. We learned that it is possible to take our ownership in-house and create our own modern platform with a very small number of people. Using this platform, we are able to focus resources on application development, building apps faster, delivering them continuously, and operating them easily. Thank you for listening to our presentation.